Hi and welcome to Home Assistant, how to with Bearded Tinker. Today we will be playing with the Open Sense map. We'll start in 10 seconds. First, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really means a lot. And also, I really would like to thank all of you who have already subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much and thank you for all the likes you've given me so far. And now, let's get cracking with the today's video. Open Sense Map is a map that will give you information about the air quality in the area around you. The data here is provided by the Sensebox, and the Sensebox is a project that allows you to have your own personal air quality station. I will not be going into details about the Sensebox project, but you can check it yourself on the website and the link to it is provided down in the description of the video. But briefly, let me guide you to the creation of Sensebox and that way you will see what options you have when you and if you decide to buy one. Let's go to Products, Overview, there is option of buying Sandbox Edu. This is educational box that will help, for example, classes learn more about either electronic projects, but also the influence of air and other parameters in your surrounding, be it a closed space or outdoors. The other one is Sensebox Home. This will allow you to install or create first, then install a personal station that will give you environment measures. And the third option is a Sensebox Mini. And the primary use for the Sensebox Mini is for the indoor air quality. But let's check the Sensebox Home. The basic kit allows you to start your home sensor. But the best thing about it is the option of including additional sensors. So for example, you can include various types of additional sensors. There are also a lot of options on how you can transfer data from the Sensebox to your home or to the machine where you want to analyze the data. It can be either Wi-Fi, Ethernet, LoRa, or uh, SD card. There is also, of course, option for the housing. And the easiest way to see what you can get, but of course, how much that will cost you, is to go to order here. The basic sense box you can buy without any additional things. Included in the kit is Sensebox MCU, temperature and air humidity, radiation shield, outdoor case and power supply cable. This is a USB cable that is 3 meters long. But the good thing is then, then you have option of configuring additional functionalities or options for your sensor. You can add Wi-Fi, SD card, uh, Ethernet connector or LoRa. They are not cheap, mind you. If you want to add more sensors to the box, you can just tick boxes away. Air pressure, illumination and UV radiation, PM2.5 and PM10 sensors, soil moisture sensor and sound level meter. But yes, the price really goes up. So let me untick everything except air pressure and temperature and illumination and UV radiation. Then you have accessories. I2C expander, micro SD card, I2C multiplexer and instrument shelter. Also, you can buy services such as assembly service or even registration and programming. As you can see, this is not that cheap project, but you do get good equipment with it. I'm not sure that it's worth that money, but that's just my personal opinion. But back to OpenSense map. If you, for example, live in an area that already has data, you can pull that data inside your home assistant. So let me briefly search for Croatia here. And I do have one sensor nearby, Zagreb Rubik, and I can see sensor data on the right side. This one is providing PM10, PM2.5, temperature and relative humidity. Although PM values have been updated, Temperature and relative humidity haven't been updated in 11 days. And if you did find a sensor nearby you, for example, let's search for something in Poland.
This sensor is providing PM10, PM2.5, temperature and relative humidity. And if I want to add this sensor to Home Assistant, all I have to do is copy part of the URL. And what part? This is the station ID of this box, so I will copy this and we will now use it inside Home Assistant to add it there. In Home Assistant, unfortunately still as of version 2021.4, you are unable to add this integration to the integrations page, so you will have to do it manually inside configuration YAML file. But that should be pretty easy. Let's go to Visual Studio Code or any editor that you are using to edit your files. Inside your configuration YAML file, find the place where you want to create air quality sensor. I will do it just here below the weather integration. I will name it OpenSenseMap and we now need to enable this platform. First things first, we need to type air quality. And below air quality, we need to specify what platform we will be using. And the platform name is OpenSense Map. Platform OpenSense Map. The only additional variable we need to configure here is the station ID. And this is the station ID we copied from the URL previously. So this will be station ID. And here I will pasting the ID of the station I found in Poland. And we are ready. Let's go to configuration, server control check configuration, and of course restart home assistant. If you did like this video so far, please don't forget to give it a like, because it not only means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. Thank you very much. And now let's add this to our Lovelace UI. Let's go to Overview. I have Weather Card, where I have a bunch of other stuff. And yes, I was testing to see if you can fit two cards one next to each other for the Windy. And we can now add the sensor here, three dots, Edit Dashboard, Click on Add Card, and we will add Entities card, Air Quality, and we now have a new card that displays the name of the sensor pulled from the OpenSense map. And if we click on it, we can see the value of Particle Matter 2.5. You also get the value of PM10, but this one is not displayed here. Let's go to Developer Tools. In Developer Tools, we can check all the values we are pulling from the station ID from the OpenSense map. Air quality, Abramka. And we can see that this value here, it's a PM2.5, matches the state. But you can see that we are also pulling the PM10, which has, of course, different state. We are pulling unit of measurement here and the friendly name. Attribution, of course, goes to the OpenSense map. But there is a tip for advanced settings. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. If you want to rename the sensor, all you have to do is give it a name. I'll call this one Poland. But what this gives you as an extra option is to provide two station IDs because we can have multiple names. Let me copy it and paste it. We will call this one Zagreb and I will copy here the value for the Verbeek station in Zagreb. So now I have two OpenSense air quality sensors. The one is the first one that I pulled from the Poland and the other one is local sensor to me, Zagreb. Why would you want to do that? For example, you can have your own sense box providing data for your home or summer house or whatever. And then you can also have the additional sensor that can show you the values for the environment somewhere else where you're interested in. Let me quickly restart Home Assistant. If we go back to the Weather tab, we will see that the sensor is not available anymore and that's normal because we renamed the sensor. So let's edit it. Let's type here P for Poland. And also let's add Zagreb because we have a new sensor for Zagreb. We can call this open sense map and save. Here. 
So now we have two sensors from OpenSense map. One is in Poland and the other one is in Zagreb. If we click on the Zagreb, we will receive the values for the PM2.5 sensor located in Zagreb. While if we click on the Poland, we will be receiving data for that sensor or viewing data for that sensor. And that pretty much is it what you can do from this sensor, of course, in retrieving data. It's up to you now to create automations that would, for example, alert you if the PM values for either 2.5 or PM10 raises above a certain level. And where you can get more information about that? This is one of the websites that provides you data on how to read those values. So, for example, you can create one automation that would alert you if the values go above 51, saying caution. The other automation could be if the values go above 100, where you can be warned that you must avoid going outside. And the third one, if God forbid ever happens, is about above 151, that would alert you to close your windows and do not go outside for any reason except if your house is on fire. There are various sites that can help you tweak out your automations based on the recommended values, the health issues, etc. If you're interested in some examples for those automations, you can find them on my GitHub repository for my configuration. That is always available on the GitHub page. The link to that is also down in the description of the video. And this is it for this Home Assistant how-to with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you find this integration useful and that you embed it inside your setup. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video or this integration or any previous video I did, you can always find me on my Discord server. But you're also free to leave a comment down in a comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss my next video. And of course, as I said, if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And that's it. Until next time, bye bye and have fun.